Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Path of Wildness Meditation for today is the 16th, 16th, 17th, I'll check, <laughs> 17th day of August 2016. Let's turn that off. Okay, let's see. Uh, the Path of Wildness is a uh, is an attempted walk at a walk of equanimity, a balanced movement through life. Uh, the balance coming from the ability to uh, the, the, the cultivated ability to um, control our emotions, not in a suppressive way, but in a conscious way, kind of being cognizant of what our emotions are doing and kind of helping guide them. Uh, in the same way, we kind of the, the kind of husbandry we have apply to our children where you know we can have be at the park and we can be talking to someone and the kids can be running wild in the park and you're kind of got one eye on them and one eye on you know the, the person you're talking the father you're talking to and uh, you know and your kid starts to climb to the uh, on the outside of the play gym and you're going hey get down likewise our emotions you know so when they start to uh, run away we don't let them let them run away we kind of uh, you know Bring them, bring them in, rein them in, so to speak. That's really the center of what all this is about. There are uh, three objectives and seven principles. The three objectives are first to uh, develop and maintain good, uh, sound, reasonable principles that uh, are the guidelines uh, for the, for the for for our lives. And the ones that I have are just the ones that I have. My recommendation is that. Uh, each of us develop our own. It's fine to borrow and uh, and build upon what others have uh, have created, but uh, the idea is basically that you have to run them through the uh, mill of your own uh, of, of your own objective reasoning. Two is the uh, uh, cultivation of good emotional reactions. Hey, that fire's out. There's a big fire up on the Cajon Pass. I can see all the I can see all the way. It's amazing the vista. I can all, see almost all the way to the high desert from here at the beach. And the smoke's all gone. They must have got it out. That's great. So I'm off track. So the uh, second one was the uh, uh, cultivation of good emotional reactions. As I was saying before, the first part of this uh, video, that's uh, what that's all about. It's really the core of everything. But I think I went on and on enough about that already. And three is the simple performance of good actions. You know, so when you know, when you see some an opportunity to do good, you, you execute that opportunity without uh, expectations of, uh, of reward or or even recognition. These seven principles are one, the uh, atomic principle, which is nothing more than a recognition that uh, the universe is uh, filled with energy that here and there freezes into matter, which forms of, forms of compounds, which in turn are made of molecules and atoms and subatomic particles, and that all these things are in changing flux, and that uh, what appears, there is no real permanence to any of this. Uh, and what appears to be what, what was today, what is today was something else yesterday and will again be something else tomorrow. And to keep that in mind, it does two things. It causes us to live a more deliberate life, recognizing that we will be transforming into something else soon. And it also advises us and, and, uh, rec and recommends us to uh, be uh, uh, aware of uh, transition, to not be, so no, not be so surprised when our status quo is no longer the case. <laughs> Do is the uh, principle of nature. Everything in the universe has a particular nature to it, usually a result of its constitution, and its, its, its makeup, what it, what it is. And uh, we can look around in animate and inanimate objects and we can recognize what they're, what they do and what they're about. Trees are st typically stationary, they're rooted in the ground, they're, they, they, they come to life, they uh, respirate, they photosynthesize, they reproduce, and then they, they give shade and then do their other things, artifacts of trees, and then they die. Animals have their nature, they're typically more, more mobile, they again uh, come into life, uh, respirate, uh, reproduce, uh, consume, consume, hunt perhaps, uh, forage, and then die. And likewise, each of us has our particular nature, which is more complex based on the fact that we have these big complex brains that give us perhaps more personality and more individuality. But coming to recognize not only the nature of the things around us, but ourselves, especially ourselves, is very beneficial in helping us to live a life that's more in tune with what that nature is. The tricky thing is that that nature isn't always, that nature is a result of the life we choose to live. So as a young man or woman, your nature may not be apparent, but the choices that you make will go into developing who you become. Uh, some, some components are probably innate. 
and it's good to try to flesh those out at an early age and then follow those and that, that old that earlier sense of the path of wildness speaks to that to young people to uh, to help them find mo action through uh, uh, kind of an inward look at, uh, at who they are and where their motivations lie where their interests lie third is the uh, principle social principle we are social animals even though I tend to not be so much so I like to tell myself I'm not but I am and uh, our best lives are lived uh, towards social ends when we're looking out for the greater good of, of our of our fellow human beings and uh, we get the most the the, the 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 most concentrated good comes from social from, from social good it doesn't mean that you can't indulge in your selfish interests it just means that you're gonna find more satisfaction in the long run we're all gonna do better if we look out for one another uh, number four is the uh, uh, is temperance, the principle of temperance. And temperance is the execution of the ability to not run away with our emotions. Now, emotions, of course, can rise up as forms of indulgence, indulging in drink, food, work, play, sex, uh, whatever the case may be, too much sleep, anything like that is an indulgence of sort, which is following the path of, of our emotions. So um, letting our emotions kind of comes all the way back to that second objective of, uh, of, of controlling or, or look, exercising some restraint on our emotions, keeping that one eye on things. Temperance is a shortcut to virtue because it allows us, there's two ways. One, if we can exercise temperance in, in our consumption, and our expression of our emotions, then we have a smaller footprint on them of our emotions. And if we, uh, and it also is like a form of exercise. It's like working out and getting a bigger muscle because you're working out, you're, you're practicing that and you're in better position to uh, exercise temperance when uh, a real challenge arises. So it's, 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 it's good in many, many ways. So temperance. Uh, the next one is the principle of uh, the great indifference. Number five, which is uh, a recognition that we're all we have is one another. That there is nothing out there, nothing greater, nothing apparent that's greater than yourself. If it's out there, it sure is doing a great job of hiding itself. Uh, my, uh, my, the the idea behind this is that if you look deep and hard at the natural world, you'll find uh, no no agency. That. Uh, it is, it, is, it is chemicals and energy, and uh, that life is a, is a form of chemical reaction uh, that we like to ascribe as something more. And it is something more. It is special. Life is indeed, indeed extraordinary, but it still is a chemical reaction. And uh, the universe is, 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 seems to be devoid of anything like us, or even, or, and certainly not anything uh, greater than us. And if we think that we discover something like that, I challenge that we're actually talking to ourselves. We're actually looking in a mirror. We're looking out of the, in the d depths of space and the, uh, the glassy darkness is reflecting our own face back at us and we're aggrandizing that in some way and calling it God. Uh, so the prince of the great indifference, when we, when we encounter that, it's a startling and a, and a shocking and a fearful, fearful thing because it quite, leaves us quite alone. But then it, it also, it also shepherds us towards the uh, towards the social principle, which is that uh, if we want to have something something deep and meaningful in life, we need to turn to one another, to uh, to the life that are around us, uh, and uh, build something out of that. So it's not a, something. It's not a pathway to despair. It's a uh, it's an avenue towards uh, towards being a better human uh, in, amidst amidst the community of our fellows. The next is the uh, principle of reason which is the governing faculty. You can make speculations all you want about the world, which are nice and may be comforting, but may be meaningless if, you, if they don't stand the test of, uh, of objective uh, evaluation. Uh, I've heard people say that they'll want to know as many true things, they want to believe as many true things as possible. Uh, and you, the path of wildness is, is a meander along uh, 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 the, the byways, of reality, uh, where using reason, the ability to to observe the world, uh, catalog facts, make a, make reasonable arguments about those, and come to conclusions that provide uh, uh, predictions that uh, about about the world that, that are accurate, and then uh, when they're not accurate, to refine 
refine our, our arguments accordingly. This is a, a, a cognitive process that involves all of our senses and all of our, our mental faculty and the ability to communicate and argue and humility and the whole darn thing. And it's very different from uh, 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 accepting a dogma and simply abiding that dogma and then blinding ourselves to uh, the, the cavities and the, and, the, and the shortcomings of that dogma um, by applying the band-aid of faith. So it's a very different um, way of doing things, and it leaves it leaves you on your own and with the burden of responsibility uh, fully on your shoulders. But it's a worthy one if you want to uh, have a, a more peaceful, um, uh, more uh, honest uh, existence, I believe. And finally, the last principle is the principle of virtue, which is the purpose of life. Virtue falls like rain in the footsteps of a man or woman who live, walks upon the path of wildness, who uh, lives their lives uh, with a recognition that all things are transitory, uh, including themselves, that uh, uh, seeks after their own personal nature and attempts to live uh, in accordance with that, that uh, uh, adheres to social, uh, that strives after social good and uh, the beautiful bounty that can be found for ourselves and for our community in so doing, that, uh, try to, that cultivates temperance and works to uh, exercise restraint in everything that they do not as a punitive measure, but as a as, as a developmental as a developmental tool to uh, make themselves more lean and uh, and strong and uh, substantive. Uh, who uh, recognizes that the universe is a yawning cavern of uh, of matter and energy that uh, only that, that as far as we can tell, only this one little pocket appears so far to have any uh, any anything like life. That if we want to. Uh, have fellowship, we better turn to one another. That uh, the uh, that the old best way to understand truth and to to flesh truth out from the universe is to the, use our reason. And that's it. That's the path of wildness. And I've got 12 minutes. Wow! And the camera's still running. So I guess I made it. Have a great day, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Take care.